Hello, my friend, and welcome back to the Keeper of the Home podcast. I'm very grateful you're here with me today. I want to share with you some of the mistakes I've made as a homemaker in hopes that you can learn from them because newsflash, I'm not perfect and I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> but of course, none of us are and the opportunity we have is to learn from our mistakes. So I've just been thinking about some of the things that I could work on or maybe some of the things that I need to work on and I hope that you can learn from them and quickly apply them in your life so that you don't make the same mistakes. So I have five, maybe six here depending on how time goes, <laughs> that I wanna share with you. And these particular mistakes um, are maybe related to how I treat my family, how I decorate my home, or just how I am living my life for myself. So let's dive in. Now, this first one is a mistake I seem to keep making. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it is happening as we've built our home from scratch. There's just a lot of things for me to learn. But I've made the mistake of maybe prioritizing my own prefer preferences way more than the preferences of the people that I live with in this home and maybe prioritizing form over function a little too often. And this has come back to bite me <laughs> on several instances. One example is that I really wanted these online linen slip covered sofas that I saw online. I felt like I was doing my due diligence by contacting the company, um, reading reviews, really researching and trying to learn as much as I could about this furniture. And we all know furniture is a heavy investment. Well, I never really asked anyone their preferences because I didn't want to know. <laughs> Because I knew what my husband would prefer was a big old ugly reclining chair that would not fit in with my aesthetics that I wanted. And of course the kids just wanted something that was super low maintenance, kid proof. And none of those things really appealed to me. So I didn't consider any of their preferences and made this online furniture purchase and it actually took like six months to get them because they were like, you, they were made once you bought them, shipped from overseas. Anyway, it was a huge investment and I was excited. And then we got the furniture and then we sat on it and realized while it was extremely beautiful, they're very uncomfortable. <laughs> and it's not, the furniture that we have in our living room is not something that is great to lounge on. It works, it does the job, and it's going to have to work for some time because I'm not about to go and replace them. But through the years, I have actually lived with a lot of regret. I feel like I could have worked harder to find a reclining chair that my husband would love and that could work for my design preferences. I feel like I could have gotten furniture that would be more conducive to family movie nights where everyone is comfortable. So I just feel like that little extra effort to really consider the needs of the people that live with me would have been worth it. So I encourage you to do that as you're making decisions around your home. I know when we're in charge of maybe the design and bringing items in and decorating, it can be hard to want to consider what other people want, but I think it's worth it and I think it's a noble effort to really talk to them and prioritize how they might feel and try to work with everyone, to make everyone happy and feel like they're at home. Something else along the same line is I often say like, will you tidy my couches or will you <laughs> um, mop my floors? I feel like that w when I use the word my to my children and my husbands, not husbands, I only have one husband. <laughs> um, but when I use the word my instead of our, I feel like they don't take ownership of the things. and. And it is evident in the fact that I chose these things, so they're mine. But 
I think it would benefit a home to make these decisions a family affair as much as possible and to try to make everyone happy. So there you go, learn from my mistake number one. Number two is sometimes, a lot of times maybe, I worry about clutter or mess over exploration and the self-discovery of my children. And this has become more apparent to me and more important to me, especially as we've brought them home to homeschool. If you didn't know that, I brought them home a few years ago to homeschool. Didn't think it was gonna be a permanent thing, but we fell so in love with this lifestyle. And something that I've had to prioritize is that our home is now my kids school and it needs to be a place where they can explore and learn and that is sometimes going to be messy or maybe not um, fit and fitted perfectly into the design aesthetic that I'm after but I have to allow for that because that creates an amazing home environment where exploration and learning um, is natural and invited. And so I've had to really work hard on that. And one example of this is I have my oldest daughter, Ray. She loves plants. I know she's going to be like the crazy plant lady. <laughs> in fact, she already is. <laughs> and she has it in her mind that she wants to start a nursery. So she's working really hard at like um, getting clippings and propagating house plants and learning as much as she can about plants. It is such an interest of hers and it's lasted. A lot of times your kids interests kind of, you know, they come and then they drop off easy, but this one has been years in the making. And she went around herself to like nurseries in our local area and asked them for like clippings or plants that they were about to throw away. She came home with a ton. And at first I was kind of like, oh, where is she going to put those in our house? There is absolutely nowhere for these plants. And so she, I was just kind of watching to see what she would do. Well, then she goes out to the garage and gets this little metal rack that we have, is so excited because she thinks it'll be the perfect thing to put in her room and stack all of her plants. And instead of being excited for her, I sighed, <laughs> you know, like, oh man. This is gonna be just messy. I don't want this shelf of plants in my house. And she could feel that attitude from me, right? I mean, it was obvious and it immediately deflated her. And so I feel like, you know, whether we homeschool or not, let's try to make our homes a place of discovery and learning and be okay with perhaps the mess that comes with it because I really wish I could go back, and I'm working to move forward on this, but I wish I could go back and say, oh, this is awesome. How could we display these in your room really cute? Like maybe get my husband involved and maybe we can build some shelves for your walls. Like use the rack right now, but then let's play around with a really cool wall feature where you get to store all your plants and nurse them back to health and learn about plants in a really beautiful way. I think if I would have approached her in that way from the beginning, it would have been so encouraging and would have really helped our relationship. So there's an encouragement for you, learn from my mistake. And while I'm talking about homeschool or this kind of thing, if it piques your interest, remember that I just launched a new class over at my Tidbits and Company shop where I dive deep into homeschool exploration. So if this has ever piqued your interest, if you're like on the fence or maybe you've jumped over the fence and you're already diving into homeschool, please take advantage of this resource I have created for you. It is hours of amazing content that you can consume whenever works for you and you'll have it forever. And an amazing printable pack that will guide you with a lot of resources and help. So if you are interested in homeschool, please head over there and check it out. If you have kids or grandkids that are doing the homeschool life, um, please send them my way as well. I'm trying to help as many people as possible with this homeschool exploration class and sharing my knowledge. So I'd appreciate your help sharing the word and I really hope it's something you can enjoy and take advantage of. Okay, the third mistake that I make and continue to make <laughs> that I want you to learn from is not taking the opportunity 
to bless my family or neighbors or people in my life with the unique talents that I have gained as from being a homemaker. And so many times my kids want to learn the skills that I have. Maybe it's photography, maybe it's sewing, maybe they want to get better at cooking. And I have developed these skills and they see me do them all the time. And yet when they come to me and say, I want to learn how to sew a dress, or can you help me make this fancy dessert? Oftentimes, um, I don't take advantage of that opportunity or I'll say, oh, I know a YouTube channel where you could learn how to sew, <laughs> which is so silly to me. Like I have these amazing skills. I should really use them to bless the people in my home, my sweet children, or maybe neighbor kids or people in our homeschool community that want to learn these skills. Now, I know I am a busy woman and I can't ask too much of myself, so I don't let myself sit in this mom guilt too much. And I encourage you not to do the same because I know we have so much on our plates and can only do so much and can only give so much. But I know that when my kids come to me and want to learn these things, if I take the opportunity to just teach them just a little bit or point them in the right direction, it's, it's so rewarding for me. It is far more rewarding for me than sitting down for hours and working or creating something for the, to share with the world instead of my children. I just know that that is where happiness lies when you connect with the people in your life and use the beautiful skills that you've cultivated as a homemaker to teach others. That's where it's all at. Where would any of us be without learning from those who have come before us and have taught us these skills? So highly encourage you to do that. Um, but then also when you need to just, you know, tell them I can't do that right now, don't sit on the guild. <laughs> saying this for myself, <laughs> but just I, I think we will all be extremely grateful for taking those opportunities to share what we have learned and have become really good at in our homemaking. All right, the fourth mistake I want you to learn from is sometimes I make the mistake of decorating or creating things for the online world or other people first and not with my family first in mind. And this really goes along with what I've already said, but it's just, it's just worth noting that it's so much more rewarding when you make a beautiful meal or develop a recipe and refine it so that the people that are actually eating it will love it. Or going out and clipping flowers and creating a centerpiece just with the intention of sharing it with the people in your home. I feel like this online world has, and social media has made it so appealing to want to appear a certain way or to share things with everyone out there. We're, we're seeking validation outside of our home because we feel like maybe those in our home don't appreciate it enough. But I feel like that is a major disservice to us and to our family. I have found so much joy in just putting down the phone, not caring about making an Instagram reel or anything like that, and just doing something solely for my family, whether that's seasonal decorating or creating a centerpiece, like I mentioned. If I just do it for them, I can actually find so much more joy in it and reward in it, and it just feels better. And this is mostly why I don't do great on social media, <laughs> because sharing or feeling like I need to share my life on social media all the time really sucks the joy for me. And I know that because I've tried to do that and tried to show up that way, but it just, it is not rewarding. And if you do that over time, it can really actually suck the joy out of homemaking and lead to comparison and all that. So try to just be a homemaker for your family first and foremost, or for yourself, for your own joy and satisfaction, it can feel really, really good. Okay, the fifth mistake that I make and continue to make, <laughs> if you're seeing the trend here, is trying to plan out every minute of my day. And if you've been with me, you're probably like, wait a minute, Cammie, you're the planner. <laughs> I am, I am so 
passionate about planning. It helps me so much to have a plan, but I feel like I've made the mistake of planning too much. And I've made the Tidbits Day Planner like to sell. If you didn't know that, you can go check that out on my tidbitsandcompany.com shop page. But I actually make a planner because I'm that enthusiastic about planning. However, I just feel like when I start to try to structure every like half hour of my day and make it too precise because I'm trying to get so much done in a day, it is actually stealing a lot of joy and a lot of spontaneity from my life and making me a little bit of a drudgery to be around. <laughs> And I started to notice I was doing this when I would like plan out my hobbies. So something that I'm really into right now is learning about herbs and medicinal herbs and gardening and like making skincare products. That's just something I'm really into right now. And I felt like in order to like get in the lessons that I wanted to finish from my Herbal Academy course, which by the way, if you're into this, Herbal Academy is an amazing school, to, online school to help you learn. I'll leave the link below. But um, when I tried to like put that in my planner, like do this lesson or create this extract or tincture or salve, when I started to make that part of something that had to be planned, it really stole the joy because the day would get busy and I wouldn't get to it and then I would feel guilty and then I felt like it was a task I had to complete rather than something I actually really enjoyed doing. So I have taken a step back from that and decided I'm only planning <laughs> maybe the things, the activities my family needs to get to, maybe the work projects I have to do because I do need some structure in there so I don't get too overwhelmed. But as far as hobbies go, or pleasure items, I don't want to put those in my planner anymore. I want them to just happen. But that means I have to provide space in my planner or margins in my life of free time so that that stuff can happen and I do it in a place of joy and excitement rather than something I have to check off my list. So think about that. I know we all have different planning personalities of how much we can handle planning and whatnot, but I have found that to be the case for me and so many things as a homemaker are work but also are hobbies. So be careful where you put your priority on those and how they fit into your life. Make sure you protect your hobbies and maybe the work part can be something you plan out and then provide the margins in your life to have time for those hobbies. I think you'll find more joy in that. Okay, I think I have time to share with you my sixth mistake that I'm learning from lately. I have made the mistake of not understanding my superpowers as a woman and how my cycle can support that. This is a loaded topic and I actually want to dive so much deeper into it with you. But in the last few years, I have really been studying um, a woman's cycle and have been amazed at how our hormones sync so well with our life as a homemaker. It's fascinating, you guys. And if you want, if you're just like, what is she talking about? I encourage you to read a couple of books that I have loved and picked up. This one is called In the Flow. It is so good and it will just blow your mind if this is a new concept to you about basically the superpowers we have during each phase of our cycle and how we can use those to support us. The other book I read um, from cover to cover is Taking Charge of Your Fertility. And even though, <laughs> even if you're not like in fertile years or any of that, it helps you understand so much of the hormones that we have as women and how to harness them and use them at the right periods of time. And to kind of give you an example of this is um, the luteal phase, which is right after your menstrual cycle. In this phase, your body's trying to renew blood, and so you kind of get a rush of blood, per se, running throughout your body and your cells, and it goes to your brain. And so the luteal phase is actually a really great time for new ideas, 
or thinking about things, planning things. Um, it's a time where I notice that that's when I, I crave something new and fresh and I need to kind of get out of the mundane cycle of life in order to feel good during that time. Anyway, these, I could go on, but I'm not going to because that needs to be a whole podcast on itself. If you're interested and want to learn more from me, please let me know in the comments. But I just think it's fascinating and I regret the years and years <laughs> of my life as a homemaker that I haven't learned how to harness these hormones and these powers that I have during each phase of my cycle. It is fascinating and it has been life changing for me. So anyway, there's a little teaser for you. If you're a homemaker and a woman and these things pique your interest, please grab these books, learn more, and then I hope to be back to kind of expand and tell you what I've learned and experienced. But don't make the mistake of thinking that your cycle is just the menstrual cycle. There are hormones going throughout the month that are crazy supportive of our work as homemakers. And let's not make the mistake of not knowing what they are, because when you know, you will be amazed and you'll be able to harness all that good stuff that nature has given to us. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this podcast and I hope you take the opportunity to learn from my mistakes. There are many more mistakes I've made in my life as a homemaker, but I hope this has been helpful to just get a glimpse of them and learn from me. Thank you so much for tuning in. I would love it if you would leave me a review or a comment. Let me know if you've made some mistakes as a homemaker that you want to share with us in this community so that we can learn from you. Thanks again, and I will be back very soon to share more inspiration for the keeper of the home.